months back, I did a video on Madeira where I was giving tips and tricks. I had gone there for three or four weeks and I just felt like I need to share what I learned so like you did not do the same mistake I did. Here, I wanted to do the same thing for a place I'm deeply in love with, which is the Azores. It's an archipelago in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, which consists of nine islands, which are each very unique and completely different from one another. This is volcanic islands, and it has one of the most beautiful landscapes I've seen in my life. So without further ado, let's start with the tips and tricks. The Azores are not Madeira. They have lots of things in common. They're volcanic islands, they're Portuguese, um, they're in the middle of the Atlantic, they grow super cool products, but they have a very different history. Overall, this is a destination that is way less touristy and developed than Madeira. So it's only very recently that uh, tourism became a thing for the Azores, mainly thanks to Delta and Ryanair doing, um, having flights and making it cheaper. But you have to keep in mind that this was for a long time a very poor part of Portugal, which in the first place is, was not necessarily the richest country after World War II, which means that a lot of houses you can still see need repair and you have lots of abandoned houses, and lots of renovation that needs to be done. There are huge investment happening to create all the infrastructures and really boosting up this as a destination for tourism, but this is a work in the making. As the Azores are islands, some things may be a bit hard to get, or it may take time before you can actually get it delivered. They are a bit more isolated and calm than mainland Portugal, giving off the island vibe that you can find in all the places in the world. But what is great about this is that they have a much preserved culture as well as a very strong identity. The other is also a very traditional place. So people are very religious. You have lots of festivals, uh, religious festivals and cultural festivals happening over the year. And like many Southern European countries, for example, nothing is open on Sundays. So I would say this is a place you go to learn about culture. It's a place you go to discover the, the unique things you find only in the Azores like all the natural beauty, all the like, amazing cities like Angra do Heroismo, or like products like tea, pineapple, etc. So all of this is really what people should be going to the Azores for and not to do things like party, because you better go to Malaga if you want to party or Ibiza. The Azores is not such a place. I would say on this one, it really depends where you're going. If you go to San Miguel, that's the largest island and it is the most developed and the richest uh, with the highest population and that's where most tourists go to. So there it's relatively easy to get around speaking English only. For the other islands, that would be slightly different when it comes to touristy activities um, like restaurants, or whale watching, climbing Pico, etc. So all of these things that are about tourists, people there do speak English. But when it comes to normal people, it's a bit less common. Having said all of that, I still think you can get around relatively easily, even if you are in a small island. People have seen tourists and they're able to help you around, even if it's just with broken English. So that should not be a problem, really. You don't have to come in summer. You can come to the Azores whenever you want during the year. Actually, I've always come to the Azores during winter and the temperature were nice and I enjoy my time greatly. So this is one of these places which have a very subtropical kind of climate. So all year round, the temperature stays like, quite nice, never gets too high, never drops too low. I think the lowest it gets, like at sea level, would be maybe 15 degrees Celsius. Of course, if you go like up to the mountains, the calderas, etc., as it's higher in altitude, 
it can get a bit uh, a bit chilly. But otherwise, you can wear t-shirts in February. So no, not a problem at all. However, having said that, going to the Azores in summer or in winter, so off season or peak season, is not completely the same. There are a few things to keep in mind. If you come during winter, the pros are that there will be way less tourists there. So it's gonna be easier to find accommodation, to rent a car, but also the price is gonna be much lower. You can get a round trip to Samiga Island, for example, uh, from London for 20 pounds, which sounds crazy, I know, for some of you, but you can go there for very cheap. Winter for me is also the best season to go to the hot springs in Furnash and Caldera Vella. When it comes like to the main cons of going to the Azores during winter, I would see two. First, it rains quite a bit more during winter. So if you're unlucky, you may have a whole day of rain, uh, which sucks, I have to be honest. And also you tend to have uh, a bit more wind, um, but often like it would be not like a full day raining. But as always, it's not always the case. You also have very sunny days. Um, and the second big con is that ferries are not running during winter. That means that if you want to go to neighboring islands, you will need to uh, take a plane. So if, for example, if you're in San Miguel and you want to have a day trip uh, to the island of Santa Maria, just um, next by, usually during summer, you, you pay like a couple of euros and you're able like, to go there for the day. Well, in winter, this is not possible. You have to take a plane, which can be a bit costly. The weather in the Azores is extremely unpredictable. It can, you can have the four seasons in the same day. It can rain, have sun, get cold, get hot. So it's, um, it's a giant mess. That's why I would always suggest you have in a bag somewhere, or in your car, a rain jacket and an umbrella, as it can come in handy very quickly. If you're planning to go higher in altitude, like Pico Mountain or um, the Calderas, etc., uh, definitely bring these because it's even more unpredictable up there. And it tends to be very windy too. I would suggest you check the webcams before you plan and go somewhere. Uh, same as Madeira, you have a website with, with uh, uh, different webcams in all the islands and in different spots in the island that can tell you right away what's at one given moment uh, the weather. And you can plan accordingly. The Azores is an archipelago that consists of nine islands. And what I've noticed is that people who go there to visit um, can be put in two different categories. One is like the people who only go to San Miguel, the main island, and stay there for like a week. And the other is a group of people come to the Azores and gonna try to do as many islands as they can during like a short amount of time. Usually staying two days per island, something like this. And overall, I think it is kind of missing a bit the point. You are of course free to do whatever you want, but my opinion on this is that you are missing the nicest part about being in the Azores, which is that each island has its own unique identity, products, and landscapes, and little hidden gems there and there that you won't be able to really discover in two days. So if you stay such a short amount of time, you're gonna see like the main highlights of the island you're in, and then you're gonna be off, but it's such a shame to do that. So having said that, how long should you spend per island? So if you're going to San Miguel, the minimum you should stay is a week. But I would tend to recommend a bit more than that, at least 10 days. You can say two weeks easy and you will still see things new every day. But this is by far the largest island and there are a lot of things that you can do, uh, lots of activities, yeah, so overall, 10 days is barely enough. When it comes to the other islands, there is no strict rule there. But I would say 
the minimum you should stay is at least three days. If you can stay a whole week, feel free to. Um, but for now, like Fayal or Pico or um, Tercera, Flores, I would say four days, four or five days would be quite a nice time to get around, see some of the things and do some activities to see the island differently. Uh, I've been working from the Azores a couple of times just to be able to stay longer, usually for a couple of weeks, a month, and I came to really enjoy this experience because I'm not time pressured and I have more time to go like during weekends or whatever, to go during weekends, do some little hikes there and there, and I'm able like to find and see things that I would never have found had I been just there for a couple of days. If your employer allows you to, I would definitely recommend you try to be a digital nomad for a month or two in the Azores. That way you will really be able to experience the true Azores, get to know people, discover the local culture, improve your Portuguese if you speak Portuguese, and visit the islands at a slower pace. If you want to travel between islands, you have two main ways. One is getting a ferry. So there is only one line that operates all of the ferries in the Azores, called Atlantico Line. You can find it online. It's, it's not really hard. Uh, the only thing is most of the ferries only run during summer. With some little exceptions, the ferry that uh, goes between what they call the triangle, so Fayal, Pico, Saint George. This one runs uh, all year long because you have a lot of locals living in Fayal, but working in Pico or in Saint George, so they do like the daily commute. And the ferry that is linking Flores and Cor. Outside of these, um, most of the ferries would not be working during winter. And uh, even during summer when they're, they're running, you have to, to be sure to check, like there they are ways to go from one group of island to another. Uh, but I know that this year, for example, this route was not operated. So check, check that out before you go to uh, not get like bad surprises. Otherwise, the other way is to take a plane. So all the nine islands have airports. Which is funny because even Kovu, that is really little, you have 400 people there, has like its own airport. Tercera and San Miguel would be where you would fly to and from most of the time for international travel. There is also one company operating domestic flights in the Azores, it's called SATA. It's quite a nice airline, to be honest. I, I flew with them a couple of times and uh, you get a nice meal, um, you get like a um, a check-in luggage, so quite quite decent, but a bit pricey. They can easily get like for one ticket like 100 euros, so that gets a bit tricky. However, I know that there is some tricks to be able to have tickets for cheaper if uh, when you put like multi destinations. So, what's the best way uh, to travel in the Azores? It really depends which island you're gonna be staying at. Overall, I think hiring a car is kind of your best bet. Um, because even if they are small islands, they're still, it's still quite a few kilometers. So, and also, as I mentioned, it rains a lot. So it's always better to have a roof over your head and not have to drive or cycle under, under a heavy rain. But having said that, San Miguel is by far the largest. Pico comes close second, I think. Uh, so for islands like this, which tend to be quite, quite big, a car is really a must. You must have it. Overall, if you can, I would suggest you try to rent a car or all their vehicles at local companies and not international companies, usually they are much more helpful and if you have any problems, they are very quick to help and you help the local economy. So think about that when you're renting. Something to keep in mind is as the Azores are islands, there is a limited supply of cars as well as accommodations. So especially during summer, 
it may be better to book way in advance so to avoid any disappointment. It is possible to hire a moped, which can be a very good idea for smaller islands like Fayal um, or Graziosa. But overall, I would suggest you do that more during summer. I'd hired a moped in San Miguel during winter and it was horrible when it was raining or when it was really windy. And if you're more into alternative kind of uh, tourism and you like to cycle or hike, um, some islands actually are very good for that. So I personally hired a bike when I was in Fayal and did uh, and went all around the island of Fayal in one day. It was totally doable and it was really, really nice. I managed to see lots of things I would not have necessarily stopped for or seen had I been in a car. So that's something I would tend to recommend in general. And hiking, actually, lots of islands have trails that cross like the, the, these islands from one point to, to the, uh, the point in the opposite side of the island. Fayal, as always, is one of them, um, but others exist. If I were to kind of sum it up, San Miguel, a car is better by far. Pico, I would tend to say use a car also because it can be, uh, it can be quite tricky otherwise. Smaller islands like Fayal, um, you can cycle, you can hike. Uh, I've heard that Saint Georges is actually very nice for hiking. And the rest, I don't necessarily have lots of insights for now. But I would do like an update if you guys are interested. Also, quick, um, quick disclaimer here. If you rent a car, get an insurance because it's so easy to scratch your car there. The, um, the cities are very cute, but they have very narrow streets with lots of one way streets. If you go to San Miguel, to the different uh, lighthouses or if you go to Punta da Ferraria the, it is so steep that you can easily damage your car so it's just too stressful not to have an insurance so which island should you visit first based on my experience I think San Miguel is maybe the best bet because it is the largest this is where you have the most infrastructures where you have the most restaurants, accommodations, and also like the most impressive and representative uh, places in the Azores, like Lagoa de Fogo, Sete Cidades, uh, Furnas. So all the places you would see online. And it's a good introduction to what the Azores are. So if it's your first time, I would definitely go with San Miguel. Then you can decide if you want to rather discover the central group of islands or the western group. So the western group is only Flores and Corvo. I've heard it's the most beautiful islands from people. So it is definitely not densely populated. But if you like waterfalls and natural landscapes, well, it's, it's maybe for you. What is good with the central group of islands is that you can easily travel from one to another using ferries, at least during summer. The group of islands I would suggest you focus on if it's like your second trip would be what they call the Triangle. So it's three islands that have ferries that run all year long, and that's Fayal, Pico, and St. George. And there you have it all. You have Pico Mountain, you have wine, you have cheese and hiking spots in St. George, and you have Fayal, which is a very good base uh, to discover the other islands. I cannot really talk too much about Graciosa or Tercera, as I've not been there, but I've heard it's maybe a bit less interesting, but maybe I will completely change my mind when I go there. And Santa Maria, it's good if you're in San Miguel, you can do a day trip during summer using a ferry. Um, it is a nice place for beaches because they have white beaches, which is quite unusual there. This point is one I would never be able to emphasize enough. When you are in the Azores, eat a lot of local products. Buy local and try lots of things they do. They have tons of pastries that are only made in 
the Azores, for example, there is something called boulevedu, which is some kind of muffin. Uh, and this is delicious for breakfast with coffee, with tea, amazing. So they have their own kind of stuff. Also, uh, each island has its own products that they're very well known for. For example, I did some videos already about that, but you know that San Miguel does pineapples, they do tea, um, they do bolovedu, but all the islands are the same. Santa Maria is very well known for its melons and they're delicious. Pico is known for wine. St. George is super well known for its cheese. Right? St. George cheese is a, has a PDO status. And overall, most of the islands do meat and milk and any products made with, with milk. 70% of the production of milk is actually uh, cow milk, is from the Azores. If there is something you should associate with the Azores, it is cows. You have cows everywhere. That's like the national animal, in a way. And I'm missing a ton of other products. They have a lot of exotic fruit that they're growing everywhere. And they also transform these in different products like liqueurs, jams, which are really worth trying. So here, definitely buy local. You have lots of markets in the different islands where you can go to and discover the local products, talk with the local producers. And I would really advise you to go there and try and see what is offered. Well, I don't like Madeira there. I don't really have that strong of an opinion because I think you have a bit of everything. So depending on what you want to do, you'll find something nice. If you want to have relaxing holidays, you have the hot spring in Furnes, you get um, this natural water pool in Punta da Ferraria. So it's part of the sea that is like warm because of the, the heat of the active volcano. You can just have fun and relax in Fayal, go to the beach, you have tons of beaches. So there are lots of ways to just have like calm, relaxing holidays. If you want to go like more sport intensive, you have a lot of hikes. If you want something kind of intense, you can go to the Pico Mountain and go there. If you are passionate about volcanoes, you can go see so many places really. You have all the calderas, you have the lava tubes like Culta de Storage, Culta du Carvon. Um, you have the lava pools where you can swim. So you have Pelinius, of course, um, that is the youngest volcano in the Azores. If you want to do more thematic kind of vacation, you can do like you know, tourism, like wine tourism, uh, and go to Pico and visit like the different uh, producers, or in Graciosa, as well as Tercera, where they also have some wine. There are many ways you can enjoy these islands. When traveling to the Azores, I discovered a couple of apps that ended up being very useful to plan the different activities I wanted to do. I will only list three here. The first is Spot Azores, which is an app where you can find all the webcams in the different islands, which show you like what the weather is kind of everywhere in the Azores, and that can help you kind of plan where you should go on a given day based on what the weather looks like there. The second app that I discovered is called Azores Viewpoints, and it's a map which gathers all the Miradorus, which are the, the viewpoints that you can find in the Azores. So it's a good way to discover places that may not be as trusted by tourists, and which are still worth having a look, especially if you go on a road trip. The last app is called Azores Trails, and it is more for people who like to do hiking, so it's a community-based kind of app where people can add additional hikes um, that they have done and that they can share with other people. So if you're into hiking, it's a good way to find different hikes on your stay there. So I hope these tips and tricks have been useful. I will try in coming weeks to do more of these videos and actually go island by island and give you a proper guide 
of the best addresses, the, the activities you definitely have to do, the things you definitely have to see, the best photography spots, etc. which I hope will help you plan your next trip uh, a bit more easily. But in the meantime, please don't hesitate to subscribe, like and comment for the referencing of the video that would definitely help uh, the channel grow, which we really need at the moment. And on this, I wish you a great day and I see you very, very soon. Cheers.